three, two, one, zero. All engines. Whether you've been married one or 20 plus years, at some point, you realize you were married into crazy. And that's what our podcast is all about. We offer love, laughter, and a dose of reality as we unpack this crazy thing called marriage. So sit back, relax, and get your ear hustle on. It's time to start the conversation. All right, let's go. Welcome to another episode of Married Into Crazy with Snooks and Lovey. I'm Lovey. I'm Snooks. And we are back. Look, um, thank you for coming back and hanging out with us. Um, we love that you love rocking with us, whatever. What, I don't know what you're doing right now. You could be out in the garden. You could be out walking around, going on a hike, um, driving around in your car. I have no idea, but we do know you have lots of choices. And, and we're just super ecstatic that you, you've chosen to hang out with us. I think that um, we're pretty cool kind of to hang out with. So You think so? I think so. So, you know, great choice, guys. We appreciate you, though. As she looks into the mirror, she's talking about herself. She ain't talking about me. Like, oh, we're pretty cool. She says we, but I'm pretty sure she's just talking about her. If you weren't pretty cool, I wouldn't be married to you still. That's true. Yeah. I, I think it's my platinum beard, you know. I think well, it attracts you. It, it does. It does. <laughs> that represents money. Oh, it represents money? I don't know about that. I know what it, <laughs> I know what it truly represents, and that's like that we have grandchildren. Oh, I still have a hard time saying that. Why? I mean, it's not like it, it's it's not even just two years old. It's six. Yeah. Our our oldest grandchild is six years old. So I'm not sure why you're having a, a problem with this still. What kind of problem that we are having, and I'm hoping y'all can't hear this, is the youngest one, the two year old Isaiah is here. And I, I'm thankfully I locked the door because he keeps trying to get in where we are and take over so we're in the studio and it's funny if you've ever been in a horror film and you hear like you know like the house is haunted and doors knobs are turning and doors are slamming and you hear this eerie screaming yeah that's i don't know Isaiah. if that's a horror film or not because to us that's yeah, like that, i wouldn't even be afraid. Been a grandchild in the house yeah i wouldn't even be afraid at this point i'd just be like yeah it's <laughs> it's a grandkid that's what it sounds like, you know, doorknobs and things slamming and screaming. And it's like, oh, no, the grands are here. Yeah. but And the house is tore up like somebody like ransacked. It. I mean, I'm glad we had no plans to have anybody come over anytime soon. We've had he's been here for a week now. So but, you know, we we're saying all that. But of course, we enjoy him. It's it's a lot of work. I forget how much work it is to have a child in the house for more than a couple of days, because typically, you know, our grandkids, they come. And then they leave um, after, what, the weekend? After the weekend, right. Yeah, now. We'll get them like a day or two. And then it's like, oh, okay, sugar them up, send them home. <laughs> no, yeah, not this time. No, he's, he, yeah, he, he'll be here with us for another week. And I think we're all just really absolutely tired. We love him. He, we love his energy. Sometimes we love his energy, but. Um, I love his energy yeah. when he's not locking my, <laughs> yeah, my iPad up or my computer. And like, I'm like, what's going on? And, or looking at my phone and there's like a gazillion pictures of his toes on the carpet. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And <laughs> you know, what is so funny um, when you're talking about grandkids or not even just there's grandkids, kids. but kids in general, especially young ones, they know what that little button on the, um, what is the home button? Mm -hmm. They know what that is. They know how to swipe. They know how to do all these things. I, I let them um, play with my iPad. I actually had a game on there and I just let him play with it. And He's looking around. He he pushed the home button and then he started trying to swipe. And I'm like, boy, say your ABCs. You doing all that. So yeah, I know it's funny how they do all that. Look, um, speaking of saying your ABCs, the very first <laughs> letter of the alphabet is A. A is for Apple. And yeah, Apple is for Apple Podcasts. <laughs> and if you could, hey, do us a favor. Um, and we're going to start making a huge push. We keep saying we are, and then we forget about it, but we really need to start asking everyone to please go to Apple podcasts and leave, leave a review, leave a review. Yeah. It makes it the podcast more discoverable, makes it easier to find. Um, so yeah, just do us that solid and go and give us, give us a review. Make sure you put five on it. Um, put five on it. If you have received, if you've smiled, if you've laughed, if you've received any nuggets from either ourselves or the, the different couples or experts that we bring on um, to enrich your marriage, do us a favor. Take 
two, three minutes and go to Apple Podcasts, put five stars on there and leave a review. Mm -hmm. um, we're not charging. We're not doing a Patreon or anything like that yet. Possibly coming down the road for an extended view, like the, the, the talk after the talk, so to <laughs> speak. Um, that's an idea that we're tossing around. But before we even go there, this is free. And we just ask that, you know, if, if there is any currency that needs to be done other than the love and, and admiration that we have for each other, um, we'd love for you to go to Apple Podcasts and help us out and leave that uh, five-star review. Yeah. And also, don't forget to hit us up at MIC. Um, not, our, not MIC. I'm sorry, marriedintocrazy.com for our coaching tab. <laughs> it's so. funny. We, we spend so much time referring to Married Into Crazy as MIC that, yeah, it's, it's marriedintocrazy.com. Go to the coaching tab. Sorry, and, father. And book a discovery <laughs> call. It's free. It's a 15 to 30 minute call. And, and those of you that have been actually booking um, those discovery calls, we appreciate each and every one of you don't want to see your names out there, not trying to put your business in the street, but we love that. And it has been picking up and we've been talking to more and more people and you know, getting more clients. And that's what it's all about, because that's our way of being able to give back, help out and, and lift that covenant of marriage. It's been a lot of fun, but continue to do that, that discovery call. And the last thing we're going to ask that you do is go to facebook.com. <laughs> is go to Facebook and look for Iron Tribe, the, the marriage, marriage community. community. Yes. It's a free community where it's a bunch of couples and there's, there's singles in there as well, um, you know, trying to learn how to get themselves prepared for marriage. Mm -hmm. And we just talk, we throw a lot of things in there. Um, there's things that we do in there that's, that's involved in married and crazy, but we also pull articles and information from a variety of other sources and put it out there for, uh, for people to just think about, talk about, hopefully inspire everyone to dig a little deeper. Mm -hmm. And I even let lovey put inappropriate pictures of me on the, mm -hmm. on the Facebook with my scarf on. And... Oh, that kind of scarf. <laughs> yeah. That kind of scarf. Okay. So inappropriate, like, mm, I'm just like, yeah, it's go that kind of, it's that kind of group y'all. Okay. No, whatever. Not really. No, <laughs> not at all. Not even, not really. No. You know who does have that kind of relationship though? No, I don't. Will and Jada. <sighs> Cut it out stop and, and what relationship is that I, that's just it we don't know we have no idea um and, and we, no, nobody knows what happens behind closed doors no one knows uh, even you know us we present you know ourselves and we're very transparent uh, what you see is what you get it, it's funny because people go you guys really are like that like when we went to new york <laughs> and you know we met some people that listened to us and you know shout out to ruthie yet again um and there were some other people hey, that, neighbor that we know that they're like, okay, this is y'all for real. It's just who we are. We don't got time to be fake. Um, there's no putting on airs. There's none of that. Um, no, when love you get on my nerve, you get on my nerve. And y'all know about it because <laughs> she'll say it. <laughs> Thank goodness she is not as adept at social media because I'm sure there'll be a lot more pictures of me wow, really? not doing you know, what I'm supposed to be doing half the time. But I thought no. you were going to say not doing the dishes. I was like, well, yeah, no, there'll never be, be any pictures up. Actually, I will say this, lovey. Um, started contributing to the housework. It's only been 25 years that we've been together. And um, lately he's been contributing to the housework. Um, the girls are kind of annoyed with him though. So why, why is this? I just kind of wow. got to throw this out. I'm sorry. So you know how when someone starts exercising or they start eating um, oh, a certain kind of or way going to church or, or whatever it is, yeah. you know, when they start doing it, now they want to tell everybody else how they should do it. Have oh. you met the Lord, your Lord and Savior Jesus? I'm <laughs> telling you, it's the best. Thing. Have you read this book? Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I wasn't even going to go in like that. But so, I mean, we all know people like that, right? Have you tried vegetables? Have you ate? Yeah. Have you eaten vegetables? Oh, well, are you drinking a soda? I don't think you should be drinking that. You need to be drinking water. Did you have your electrolytes or whatever? I was gonna, oh, I oh. just started yoga, hot yoga. You got to try it. So, that's where that's kind of where lovey is right now with uh, the dishes. Oh, wow. I'm just saying so. I'm and, and tell me if I'm not being truthful. So he he's been saying this for a number of years. You guys, you need to rinse your stuff off after you use it yep. and don't put it in the sink. But you just need to put it in a dishwasher right away because that way it doesn't dishes won't stack up, blah, 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 whatever. OK, so he's been saying that. Mind you, he's not been doing that for all of these years. So now this week, he decided, I guess, to practice what he preached. And he's been going off on everyone. Didn't I say, 
rinse this off. How hard is it to rinse your dishes off and put it in the dishwasher? And the girls are just like, when is he going to get off this whole cleaning nope. thing? Drill Sergeant <laughs> Dad is in the house. I'm telling you we right gonna, now. But we're going to see how long it lasts for you that you do the dishes. Oh, because the system broke down. Look, I'm just we, saying. I ain't going to say the system broke down. You wasn't even part system, of the system. Sometimes the system is not having a system. And we did not have a system. Yes. And I'm just tired oh of, the, of the, the sinks stacking up with dishes, all that. So no. Mm, oh, my gosh. No, so we're going to Oh, my gosh. Implement. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. First of all, we're not living over here. Just dishes everywhere. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> if we waited on you yeah they I'm gonna would start be. taking pictures and posting okay go Nasty. ahead yeah <laughs> she almost said a bad word <laughs> they gonna talk about you they gonna talk about you yeah they're like, gonna be like Ooh, i'm gonna show a picture why, of me how come his wife don't do this how come his wife don't amen. do that there's gonna be a picture of me washing the bowl amen? Did yep. you really I'm, say I'm, amen? I'm, I'm be washing the bowl. Wow, now you want to be all be churchy. Look, I'm gonna be looking over at the other dishes them day dishes <laughs> them, day them day dishes <laughs> Yeah, that's right. But what's that got to do with Will and Jada? No, nothing. nothing. I just said, I just had to bring that up because you said something that made me think about. Man. So I was just throwing that out there. I'm trying to keep us up on contemporary times. And what's funny is that it's not even <sighs> us. Somebody brought it up the other day. We were on a podcast with, on Liquor Talk. So uh, <laughs> shout out to Vic. That's right. Vic Jones. Vic Jones. Shout out to Mr. Vic Jones on Liquor Talk. And uh, we were on there for, uh, he had a panel. There were a couple mm -hmm. of married couples and a couple of single individuals. Mm -hmm. And in the warm up, we were just kind of talking. Was it there? No, no, it wasn't. Was it with Vic? Yes, it was. It was with Vic? I mean, yeah, it was. It was. With Vic. So they brought up, and then so one of the other. I the was other like, couple, wait, something else happened. I don't know. Like, Who's? Um, We've been doing so many interviews, it's been crazy. But, um, they brought up the Will and Jada thing and Stux and I look at each other like, well, we have no yeah, idea. I have no idea what you're talking about. What's going on. But it's but they, been, and it hasn't gone away. Well, it, I guess something else came up or happened to, um, it, no, maybe it was this this one particular article. Oh, on People the, Magazine? Yeah, I guess that's what it was. But I mean, there's so many different things I, I feel like that are happening with, with them as a couple. Um, and just kind of like you said, no one really knows um, what goes on behind closed doors with other couples. And I, it makes me, I don't know, I feel some kind of way about when people just kind of throw their judgments out there about other people. You know, it's like, will we care? Like every, okay. So people were upset about the August Alcino, whatever his whatever name is. His name is yeah. yeah, that Jada Mr. you know, Mr. supposedly that messed around. And yeah, whatever we're calling it with him and i was like so now everyone's mad at her but it's like so if well, that was a while ago. if it wasn't no they're still mad at her um so because she messed around with the dude or because she's married to will i mean was she if she was just a regular person would we hate her you know well because it's will smith because he we and we like will because why he's a good actor and he makes us laugh and he was the fresh prince he's and, the prince of bel-air <laughs> that's what i'm saying but you know, you know, it's it's because you know, here's the challenge. We put people up on pedestals. Um, we put people up on pedestals because of what they do for us. Right. They entertain us. So Which we put them really on a pedestal. Funny. This is really funny, though, because we're talking about this, about putting people up on pedestals or believing the persona that is projected because of a character that they play or, mm -hmm. you know, a sport that they play mm -hmm. or. Yeah, like, um, you know, it's funny. Uh, no, I, th I think it's funny because when you take a look at, um, we're talking about Will and Jada. Uh, what was it? Low Down Dirty Shame? <laughs> so when Jada was yes. in Low Down Dirty Shame. <laughs> and she ran into, oh my God, what was his name? I don't remember. There was a guy that was on a. The, Chad, Chad. Ch oh, it was Chad, Chad. Chad. In a, uh, there's an episode, it's a famous episode, or I don't want to say a sequence that was in the movie where jada ran up on this dude that was an actor but he was playing a certain person on a uh in a, a soap in, in a soap opera like a novella and, type thing and, and in the soap opera he cheated on somebody or whatever and she was so invested that when she saw him in real life she, well you know in the movie she ran up on She's dude like, Chad! and then she punched him it was and it's funny because it's so funny she was so into that but the, here's what's it's funny how life imitates art because now here we are all, 20 30 years later however long it was well because in training day i almost 
Well, almost in Denzel some divorce papers after training day. <laughs> but it's funny. How, so here we are now caught up in the persona that people know. Because listen, I don't know Jada. I don't know Will. You know, we don't know any of these. We don't know these politicians. We don't know anybody out there. And yet we form these opinions, these allegiances, or, you know, or, or we rebel against people based on what we see on the media, television, music, um, movies, what have you. And we have no idea that is so wrong for us to do that. And yet this is what we're doing right now with Jada and Will, because we have a persona. It's like, oh my gosh, she cheated on Will. We don't know the first thing about Will, what he's really like. We no. think we do. We burge and we corf. And we, we think we know Jada or we thought we did or so forth, you know, and then she does the red table talks. And so people are like, oh, she's great. And she's doing this with her mom and they're having these real talks and all these different things. But look, let's not get it twisted. It's Hollywood. Just like right now, everything that's coming out about Will and Jada, there's two things that are happening with Will right now. Will has the movie about mm, King um, Richard. Yep. King Richard's coming out. Right. So, uh, about um, being the dad of Venus and Serena Williams. And then he also has a, a, a memoir, a book, a book called Will that's coming out. And I, I find it odd that all this is coming out as we're having a build up to this, these two major events, you know, in the latter part of some people's careers. So what are you trying to say that he's not telling you the truth no, or I, something? I, I think that they're being very selective about what's being told and what's what really reality and what's not just like re reality TV. How much of it is scripted reality TV oh, reality to me when I say in reality, it's the real thing, but is it really the real thing when it's scripted? You know what I'm saying? If, if you're okay, we're cutting and we're it's, it's an act or whatever. It's not really reality. It's, no, it's not. And so we have to sit there and look at our relationships and like, oh, I would never do that in my relationship. I wouldn't do that. And the reason why I keep bringing up Will and Jada is because, you know, it's you contemporary. Like Jada. Jada is still on my list. <laughs> I know. I said that. <laughs> she on my list. And now that I know that they have an open relationship. Oh, brother. Well, we, <laughs> we don't. So oh, that's true. There's that part. That's true. Yeah. So keep talking. Go ahead. So we're going to have to like, you know, you know, we don't have to do anything. Really? Because no. I'm just saying. Me too. So if, if you read the article in, in People Magazine, uh, it was highlighting an interview that Will did with Oprah and he was talking about all this stuff that's going on. And we read the article and there are some points in there that came out to me that I thought were really interesting um, that we should think about. We've always talked about, you know, your iron tribe, who you surround yourself with all that. But the one thing that we don't talk about enough is how, um, who we were, well, we do this with our couples that we coach. We go a little bit deep on people like, you know, what were your influences? What were the types of things that you've seen modeled for you in the past? What is your perception of marriage? What does that really mean? And so we talk about, you know, the aunties, the uncles, the, the parents, the grandparents, um, the people in your neighborhood, people that you've seen. And one thing that Will said, he, he mentioned something along the lines that how he and Jada grew up differently, mm -hmm. that his household, you know, marriage meant a specific thing, but that in she was exposed to it wasn't um i think he said something about like she didn't have the traditional i don't know if he used the word traditional um uh family example like he had i don't i can't remember exactly if that's the word he used no he said he said uh unconventional relationships well, okay well traditional okay yeah i guess it can be something different but um yeah their relationship her relationship the examples maybe that she saw were unconventional right examples or what she saw as growing up so in her I'm, I'm just kind of going by what he says or what my takeaway is basically for her the traditional conventional relationship was out of sync and out of whack so maybe she struggled more with doing that as opposed to him. Like, you mean like doing like the, the conventional monogamous? Mm -hmm. Well, he even said that they, ha they had a monogamous relationship for the majority of it. So even right there, it lets you know that, okay, well, monogamy went out the window at some point. Well, I mean, because, well, she never believed in a, he said she never believed in um, a conventional, uh, conventional marriage. I don't know if he said this on, he was referring to another interview he did before but yeah he said that she didn't 
believe in conventional marriage. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know about that. But one thing that they talked it's about article. was this, this, he asked a question, what is relational perfection? And I'd love to know what his definition of relational perfection is. But he did specifically state that for a large part of their relationship, monogamy was what they chose, not thinking of monogamy as the only relational perfection. And, and I guess that's a phrase, and I'm guessing, you know, I'm assuming that when he's talking about relational perfection, that they're really talking about um, harmony, having that relational harmony, being you know, in sync, being able to ha have peace and, and, and happiness and that monogamy wasn't giving that to him. So mm -hmm. how, how does that even work? Because I mean, we've both, our perception is uh, monogamy is a huge part of our relational harmony. Well, I mean, yeah, because anything else would be, it would, it would have my mind going to different places. Um, I don't believe in an open relationship as far as because to me, that's what um, not having a monogamous relationship is. There's an agreement that we will see whomever or whatever. Like I said, in my mind, I don't want to sound like I'm saying how their relationship work. But for me, if you not if you don't have a monogamous relationship, you see whomever you want to see. Now, maybe it's it. He didn't say monogamy physically. Is it emotional? Is it? Mm -hmm sexual is you know what i'm saying um it could be I, I i am with this other person but i've never touched them that's how emotional really uh, affairs kind of get started emotionally i'm with someone else but does i've never slept with them you know we we've we've had couples that we've talked to and i know people that have had emotional affairs you know, never, never touch the person, never, whatever, but emotionally they're invested in another person. To me, that's even worse. I, I, well, I, I think so because it, it, it takes time to build up for the emotional piece for me, you know, physical, you, oh, I, that's pleasing to me. My flesh is my flesh. I want it. And bam, you know, that's where the wham, bam, thank you, ma'am comes in or whatever. But the emotional piece, it, there's a more of a buildup for that. You got to really take time to get to know the person. You have to, you know, oh, yeah, we jive in these ways or whatever. Oh, we sink right here. Or, okay, yeah, we got a lot in common. And you pursue that. That's how it starts. Right. You know, it doesn't. Well, do you pursue it or do you, are you looking for something that doesn't exist in, in your current relationship? No, are you trying I'm, to fill a void? But when I say you pursue it, it doesn't just happen. You have to go and get it. Do you, does that make sense to you? Well, it doesn't just show up. Yeah, I think it's something that you have to be in pursuit of, or at least, I mean, it's exactly. it's, it's, it's not a passive occurrence. Exactly. That's what I mean by pursue it. I'm not going to just be working at my desk and then the next thing I know, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so in love with Jed or whatever. And I can't wait to tell him everything all about, <laughs> no, no, you know, there's a freedom I think that exists within a monogamous relationship and they think, Oh, it's, it's prison. You know, you're with one person, but I think there's freedom in knowing that you can be everything you can possibly be with that individual. But I think it takes both of you to be, to have that same mindset. Will made this comment in the interview where um, he said, we have given each other trust and freedom with the belief that everybody has to find their own way and marriage for us can't be a prison. And I don't suggest our road for anybody. I don't suggest this road for anybody. But the experiences that the freedom that we've given one another and the unconditional support to me is the highest definition of love. So what does that say to you? It, it says that they've it got says a couple of things to me, but. Well, it says to me that they're on one hand, they're defining their definition of love. They're, mm -hmm. It's their definition of love is unconventional, is unconventional and it, it's nonconformist. And it's one of those things, but it's, it's working for them. And, and part of me is like, well, who am I to, to judge or tell them like, oh, you guys are crazy or I can't believe that. Or that. It's, it's not for me to, to judge and just because I don't agree. Like that doesn't work for me, but that doesn't mean that it can't work for you. And I have my own belief system in place because of my Christianity and, you know, my faith, but what? 
it better be more than just your Christianity. You better not be walking around here wanting another woman, but not getting one just because you're a Christian. Oh, or no, because of your no. Christian views, I should say. No, not a, no, no. See, I didn't mean for it to come across like that at all. Um, a lot of it has to do with the fact that I live in the state of California. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it. Christianity in California, you know. Mm, yeah, and that's a double whammy. <laughs> yeah, I was say, I'm not getting half. I'm getting all of it. So, uh, see what I'm saying? saying? See what I'm saying? No, um, but it's one of those things where it's just it, there is a freedom. And, and I think that what people need to find is the freedom that their love, their definition of love is going to be able to give them. I don't think anybody should be in a prison. Well, and, and if, if you feel like being with one person is, is prison, I mean, cause you know, some relationships feel like prison cause it, you don't get to do what you want to do. You're told what to do, when to go to bed, you know, all these rules that you have in prison, um, some some marriages are 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 like that unfortunately so if to him or to them i should say if that works for them then okay that works for them but i have a i I don't know so what was the big ruckus about jada and the other guy then if you know they're for the most part their marriage has not been i don't know i mean i I haven't dug deep into it and people right. out there that are into social media and all that have been following us. They may know, uh, let us know. Hey, write us <laughs> at coaching at married into crazy.com and let us know if you know, cause I, we'd be curious to know, but here's the, here's the funny thing. I, I think that my take on it and that could be hundred percent wrong was that the hurt and all that came in because they're supposed to have an, an open and um, like transparent, honest, transparent. So and, and maybe they didn't know he didn't know that she was with someone else, something like that. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I know that for myself, I would have a problem with someone else being in our circle because our, 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 our relationship is just built for two. I'm only built for one other person. And I would have a serious problem with it be me, you, and another dude. Because it wouldn't be. Why well, gotta girl. be a dude? <laughs> Why's well, it gotta be a dude? Why's it gotta, gotta be a woman? That's what I don't get. You All guys right. are so funny to me. It's like, oh no, only if it's a woman. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you just had to throw that dig in. There. I just had to throw that in there. Yes, no, you're but, absolutely right. Yeah, I will say this. There were some things in the article that I read that um, I did agree with. Okay, what? There was this there was a statement, and again, this is all one side. This is all coming from Will because he's the one that was being interviewed. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's no there's nothing from Jada. Mm-hmm. And Will made a comment, um, something along, I'm paraphrasing, but something along the lines of um, that they had they made a realization that there is nothing that a a woman could fulfill for him or that a, a guy could fulfill for Jada, meaning that going to find something in someone else wasn't going to be the solution. And he says, you have to find your happiness. Like they're not going to find their happiness oh, so in the I- arms of another, like he wouldn't find happiness in the arms of another woman and Jada wouldn't find happiness in the arms of another man. And that, they, that, that happiness that they're looking for, that they're searching for has to come from within. And I, I was like, I totally agree with that, that whatever they're looking for, it, not, it needs to be intrinsic. It needs to be something that's grown within them and extends out. Now, if it includes other people, then I think that's, that's on them. That's something that maybe they're exploring. But I, I do like that, um, that they weren't looking for this illusion or reaching for this illusion of, you know, if I do this, I'm going to make her happy. Or if she does this for me, it's going to make me happy. Or I need her to do more of this to make me happy. That's an illusion that so many people get caught up in. And I, I do like the, the evolution of thought when it comes to that. No, my happiness, I'm responsible for my happiness. And I have to be the one to actually grow and become more to harness happiness, to emanate happiness, to create my own happiness. But like you and I, we just, we choose to do that with each other exclusively. We're not have you know, being happiness and then trying to share that, you know, outside of like the circle, as you were talking about earlier. Um, 
Well, look, look, there's a, there's this one part in here um, that, where is it at? I swear I saw it say this. Oh, it says, um, we realized that it was a fantasy illusion that we could make each other happy. We agreed that she had to make herself happy and I had to make myself happy. Then we were going to present ourselves back to the relationship already happy versus demanding that the other person fill our empty cup. Oh, okay, I get that. I mean, I, I do get that, but I, I don't know. I, I, I was kind of thrown off by the make each other happy. I'm like, I do stuff to make you happy. I don't, I, because I want you to be happy, but you're already, when you say happy, and for me, I'll use it as a whole. Now, you can't make me whole. I can't make you whole. So if if he's talking about it in in that regard, um, happy versus whole, because um, when people I, people talk, I said love you makes me so happy, you know, because you do make me happy, but I was already whole before you you started making me happy. No, you weren't. <laughs> I wasn't. Okay, I, I whatever. You. you completed me. <laughs> okay, no. you finished me. No, but I I get that. I I feel like. Um, there are instances where there have been instances where people are like, well, if I just find the right guy, then I'll be happy. If I just um, There's too much get of this promotion, then I'll be happy. Um, if I, lose if I just pounds. lose this, yeah. Well, I, I know I'll be happy because then I can fit my clothes. But <laughs> um, I, I get that. We can't have our circumstances make us happy or make us whole or complete us. We have to find out within ourselves and like he said about the filling our cups or um our cups have to be running over already well but there's times where i mean let's just be real i mean there's times where our cups are empty or not full but see there are times when our cups are empty or not full and even in our relationship there have been times there have been many times when my cup was empty well, wait wait how, I, how did you jump from there have been times no there have been many times well i'm saying there have been, you know that but there have been many times where my cup was empty or my cup was um wasn't full but see i i, I don't want to say i was looking for you to make me happy as a whole person no that's when you you added the cream to the coffee or you were able to help me with filling my cup up not to I didn't fill it I just well, well you but you 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 were an aid to me you were okay. an aid to me because I'm just gonna be honest sometimes I just don't have it in me to just be whatever and then you come when I'm when I'm having one of my episodes when I'm down when I'm feeling depressed or I'm feeling sad or whatever you know then you'll come and and, and you're you're my helpmate you're like okay What's going on what's blah 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 whatever you're there to help me you encourage me um not that you made me whole and happy uh and completed me because i was already that but every now and then there's a crack in in the, in, in the exterior or you know the bubble may pop or i i don't know however i'm if i'm even saying it in the right way but when you have the right per the, the right partner when you're down and your cup is and your cup is low, my my partner may have the may be the the teacup or the the kettle, and he helps fill me back up. But you don't continuously do it to where you're draining yourself and you're taking from you when you're you know you you're pulling you you could be pouring your runoff from your cup because your cup is full from so you're taking your saucer and you're pouring that extra into my cup so that. Right. I'm, I'm full. So I could breathe again, or I could, whatever. I'm not saying that, um, I'm using you or I need you to do those things for me because I know that those things come from within, they come from me, but there are times when I just don't have it. And that's where, when you need a good partner or you find that you have the right partner, that's like, okay, I got you. Okay. I see that. I, I feel that. Um, but I, but I get what he's saying too, I guess that you can't be half a man and half a woman and then come together and think that, okay, we're all whole now. No, you just one half, what, half a man and a half a woman and a half of a relationship. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? It, it does, you know, and 
I don't know. You said a lot. And, and I feel like I hope it's good. <laughs> no, it's good. No, it is. It is. No, every bit of it. And I think that's a challenge, you know? So not only are we marriage coaches and um, of course, you know, we have the business side of it uh, and you guys are listening to the podcast. So you're familiar with this, but there's other things that we do as well. Like we're, we're moderators for a, a, a marriage group. Um, I'm not going to mention it because um, I just don't want to. But you just mentioned it. I said a group. I didn't say the name, oh. uh, but it's for, it's, it's for another organization. And then, you know, we're, we're one of three moderators that oversee it and we guide couples and, and these discussions and have these conversations. It's, it's an international group. And we, um, there are singles that are in there as well. And one of the things that I'm very conscious of is making sure that we're painting a very realistic picture. A lot of times, there's a lot of married couples in there that have been, there's some of them that have been married longer than us, quite a, the great majority married much less than us, but trying to really paint a picture where um, it's not about, oh, when you get married, when you find that right person, you know, then you're going to, you know, then it's going to be all beautiful and the grass is going to be so much greener. And no, I mean, I really bend over backwards to make sure they know it's work, but also that like what we're talking about right now, that this other person is not going to be your panacea they're not your cure-all for whatever you think is ailing you right now and just because you put a ring on a person's finger and um, take your vows before god the the sun doesn't shine any brighter on you you're still going to have challenges you're still going to have things you have to go through but like you said i like what you said earlier that i'm your help me and your mind and that what we do is now we have two minds two pairs of legs, you know, another set of hands that can help lift whatever these burdens may be. Mm -hmm. But it's not as if, you know, it's, it's not double the strength because we're not equally yoked when it comes to strength or what have you. Um, but it's just assistance. Well, it's not equally yoked. <laughs> um, when you're saying about the strength, because sometimes I'm stronger than you. Sometimes you have to lean on me. I I, I don't want it to be about because the man is the bigger right. and, you know, he's like the stronger that. or whatever. No, there are times where I have to help my husband and um, I have to be the one to take charge or I have to be the one to, to whatever it is. You know, th there are going to be situations where each, one partner is going to be stronger than the other partner in something, right. you know, and as long as I won't say as long as we have to understand how important we say this all the time. Communication is very, very important. Now, Lovey's right. You know, he, he bends over backwards to make sure people know that there's work involved and it's not just um, the sun is going to shine brighter or whatever. I, I, he, I'm saying he's right in that regard. Like that's how he looks at it. I don't look at it like that. For me, the sun shines brighter. I'm just going to say, but it's also grayer sometimes too, you know, um, <laughs> it, it looks like, like when she goes in the refrigerator to grab a piece of cake or to get some more cookies that he's eaten and her dang nabbit husband ate him. That's when this gets that's real when it gray. Gets, it's not even gray. It's black clouds over here. At that time. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, I, mean, I, but you, I, I just feel like, you know, we, we, we don't want to just go out of our way to press upon everyone that, oh, marriage is so much work and it's so this and it's so that because a lot of people gonna be like, shoot, what am I, what am I getting married for? It is work. And we've said it before. It's a lot of work, but it's the good work. You know, it's like lifting weights is, is a lot of work, but you, you love the results once you, you, oh, yeah, you get absolutely. into shape. And sometimes it's painful. And sometimes you're like, what in the heck was I even thinking when I decided to, to do this? You're going to have some of those moments where you just look at them and just go, ugh, you know, but then you have those other moments where you just like heart eyes. Cause that's all you see. Heart eyes, heart eyes, Oh, like, in the, like on the, um, the emojis. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, you, you never want to scare anyone off. And, and, and the other part of it is, you know, it may not be, the work may not be as hard as you're thinking, oh my God, it's going to be so hard. And you get out there and be like, oh, this is not as bad as I thought it was going to be. You know, it could be that. It, it just really just depends on the, communi the communication that you've had, how, how prepared you are. And, and even, even in that, I thought I was prepared. I thought we were ready to go. I thought we were, you know, 
we were in late twenties and we got good jobs or whatever. And, you, <laughs> you know, well, <laughs> it, it wasn't a whole lot of craziness surrounding our relationship. You know, we were equally yoked mindset. We had same type of value. So why else? What? what? Okay. We, we should be ready to go. Let's go. But here we are. I'm going to say here we are, but four, okay. four years later, oh. I was like, I want a divorce. So it was hard because it's like, oh, there's some things that's going to come up that you're going to be like, shoot, I, we didn't cover that in marriage 101. Yeah. Rarely because, are you ever as ready as you think you are. Seriously. And you can have all type of, well, this theory and that blah, 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 or whatever. I read this book. And, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, that, according to T.D. Jakes. And, <laughs> but, you know, we don't live by theory. If we're, if we're being honest, unless we're in school. Because half the people don't even know what certain types of theories are when you're talking about relationships and stuff like that. Oh, wait, you're not a relationship guru? Well, I am, oh, but okay. no. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I understand, I understand. I'm just saying we, we, don't, we don't live by theory. We live by, we live life. It's not always black or white because a lot of life, much of life is lived in the gray. So stuff is going to come at you and you're going to think that you're ready for it, but you may not be, and you're, then you're like, wait, what just happened? Well, see, I'm glad you said that, that much of life is lived in the gray. And I'm bringing it back to Will and Jada, because for so many people that are outside the lines of their life, right, outside of, if they're on the periphery from them, we look at them, and to the great majority, they read these stories, they hear these, these interviews, and all of a sudden, we're living in black and white. No, it's black and white. Either you're married or you're not. If you're doing this, then, you know, and, and we're making all these judgments about them. And you earlier, you had mentioned communication. And again, I'm not advocating for their lifestyle, but I'm also not condemning. It's one of those things where they have to find what works for them. Mm -hmm. And Will Smith said, you know, everyone, I think Oprah asked him, you know, so when you guys are talking about your open relationship, and I don't think he's ever come right out and said, oh, we have an open relationship. But she asked, do you guys have other sexual partners? And he said that so many people place emphasis on, you know, sex, you know, and he said that they're on a spiritual journey to cleanse the poisonous, unloving parts of their hearts. And they're doing it together in this lifetime. And that's all that matters. He went on to say the goal is not a sexual goal. It's spiritual. We're going to love each other no matter what, since we're talking about it. Let's just talk about it. No woman can make me happy. So I don't need to look for one and try to make me happy. No man can make Jada happy. So she don't need to go out looking, you know, for one to make her happy. We both know that there was no person that we will find to fill that hole. And then he, he brought it back to how they talk, they communicate. You know, I don't think they communicated too much with that Alcina thing, but I'm just saying that, but they do talk. And it's funny to me that people are condemning. And yet it almost appears that they have a level of commitment to each other and a level, however you want to, whether you agree or not, you know, from the, the monogamy standpoint, but they have a commitment to each other and to their family that many people in a conventional relationship don't have. You've got people that stay married for, you know, 30, 40, 50 years. And, but, you know, they've been cheating and, and, they, and they've got a, a hateful, vengeful heart you know, and they've got all these other partners and they have kids by, you know, multiple partners and they're, you know, they're, they're stepping out and they're not stepping out because it's an agreement or they're, they're it's, it's this fulfilling thing. It's more about them going out and doing it to be spiteful, or they're just, they're, they're being very um, hedonistic to fill that void um, and, or they're abusive, but they're married, you know, they, <laughs> They call each other, you know, they're doing all this abuse, whether it be spiritual, physical, mental, financial. Um, there's so many things that they do to each other out of hate, out of spite, out of anger. Um, all these negative emotions. But people are going to look at them and say, you know, but hey, but they've been married for X amount of time. And I think that's wrong. Well, that's that's one um, that's one flaw in the whole marital thing. We love to place emphasis on the quantity of years 
versus the quality of years. Mm. You know, yeah, we sit here and we're, we all, we talk about, yeah, we'll be married for 25 years in um, January coming up. And oh my God, the silver anniversary, blah, blah, blah. You know, and, and everyone loves that. I mean, we love it too, because being married for a long time, it says that you can still get out, you know, that's what it says it on says paper. You can still get out. You can still stick it out. Oh, you can stick it out. I thought you said you can still get out. And I'm like, still, I can't. You can't still get out. You can't, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, my Californian Christianity says I cannot. No, it, it, I'm glad. And so does that uh, trust. Oh. Says that too. <laughs> but okay. So, you know, quantity has been 25 years, quality has been 21. Hmm. Well, Interesting you would married, say it that way. Married. No, it's, it's been, well, okay, maybe 22. Okay, so I beg to differ with you. Okay. Yeah, quantity coming up on 25, mm -hmm. but quality feels like eternity. Well, I'm talking about in numbers, babe. In the in the in the actual numbers that we I, I was trying to be romantic. Oh, I'm sorry. I was being <laughs> I'm being literal. <laughs> I'm being literal and got your little abacus out and like, carry the two subtract the three <laughs> i don't mean it like that but no i appreciate that it, and it does feel like that to be honest with you it's so funny because i i promise you guys if i did not if we didn't remind people of year 24 i mean year 24 if year four i would think it never happened just because it's so the way that we Born are to us now it it is like what you you asked for a divorce I can't believe, I can't even imagine you guys, you know, and, and that, that's a great thing about, um, that's kind of a testament to like our married and the crazy coaching too, that we talk about. I love to tell people that, look, I was ready to go. I was out the door. He was finna move all that, but here we are. We made it work. Hmm. We came back together and we found a way and we didn't find it by just like, okay, kicking the can down the road. We did the work, whatever that work was that we had to do, because our work is maybe different for someone else's work, right. you know, because our situation totally different. I've never known anyone to be in our type of situation before. Not that there aren't couples out there. Well, it, but, it reminds me of, um, we, we interviewed a couple um, during the pandemic, um, Carl and Erica Kinsey. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I love their story because it was a story of, of redemption, you know, of, you know, they split up, you know, they were meant to be together and then they, they split up, but then they got back years together. later. Yep. They got back together years yeah. later and whew, to look at, and they'll tell you that to see them now, you would not know what they went mm -hmm. through before. And they have a, an amazing love story, mm -hmm. but I think that there's, there's redemption that's available for each and every one of us for having difficulties with our relationship but you have to be willing to unlearn as much as you are willing to learn and to grow. People think that, oh, I have to grow and I have to evolve. And that's true. I was about to say, well, that but we forget true. that we also have to unlearn. Mm, that's exactly right. And we have to devolve some of the things that, mm -hmm. that has been um, put into us over so much time. And so there's a delicate balance between the two. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that some of this, and, and getting back to Will and Jada, I think we have to unlearn not, not what it means to have a monogamous relationship, not what it means to have a conventional relationship. What we need to unlearn is to point fingers and judge those individuals that are different from us. I was going to say that we need to unlearn. Um, well, what we need to learn is that everyone's relationship is not going to be your grandma and grandpa's relationship right. or your cousin and you know, your cousins or your aunties and your uncles or whatever, because a lot of those people in some instances, they told you, this is how you need to be. This is what you should do. This is what you accept, blah, blah, blah. But you're the same stuff that you're telling me you, you're, you're, you're doing it. You're also, so am I practicing what I'm, what you're, it, what is it? Uh, they didn't practice what they preached. Um, they told you what to do, but they weren't practicing what they were preaching. There's a certain phrase I'm looking for and I can't, it's like on the tip of my tongue and I can't find it. 
um, but was not what? coming to me. But it's like a lot of times they point fingers and they're blah, blah, blah. oh that blah blah blah. They're talking about this and that or whatever. Mm. But then they're going home to an abusive relationship or they're either the abuser or they're the abused. Well, it reminds me of the Sadducees and the Pharisees in the Bible where they sit there and they profess the word. They, they, they walked around, you know, talking about the Talmud, you know, or the Torah or, you know, basically the Old Testament. And they're, they're saying what you need to do. And they tried to trap, you know, Christ many times, you know, by quoting the scripture, quoting the Talmud and, you know, the law. And he would sit there and just ask questions and send it back on them you know, in parable form, sometimes telling stories. And, and I think I, I know right now that there's probably a handful, if not more of you out there, like but you say you're a Christian, but you're talking about, it's almost sound like you advocate for what Will and Jada are doing. I'm not, I'm doing exactly what Christ commanded me to do. And that was love my neighbor. I'm just extending love. Like, I, I don't know. That's between them and God. That's between, you know, but I do know this, that God is not happy with those individuals that are married that are wearing the rings that are you know professing the covenant and behind closed doors they're calling each other behind you know every ever the little name or mm -hmm. they're sneaking around and you know cheating on each other and you know and, and they're teaching their children you know albeit mm -hmm. indirectly to, to create that same behavior and let that thing be their legacy to continue to grow because mm -hmm. that speaks out against the covenant and the things like God wants. we're supposed to love each other and i just think that if it doesn't match what you believe it to be you know, observe it and keep it moving, you know, and, and how about living how, how you, you want to tell everybody else to live. Well, I was about to say, you set the example by set the example by being the example. You know what I'm saying? Don't just tell me what to show me how to be it. So yeah. So Will and Jada, no hate, no shade. Um, it, but just keep it out of the news. It's not their fault. <laughs> I mean, just, I mean, I, I feel like that. It's like, Every time someone um, famous or whatever, something happens and, oh, this person said this or this person said that, people gravitate and, the, and they, they rip them to shreds more times than not. They're ripping them to shreds for something that they did or, oh, did you see this or, oh, did you see that? And, and it's like, what gives you the right to, to, be, to be judge and jury and executioner? of these the people and their relationships i'm you know if if, if jada's actions hurt what's his name august alcina then jada owes him an apology you know what i'm saying or she hurt will or willow and Jaden or whatever she owes them an apology she doesn't owe us an apology for whatever it is that mm -hmm. she did in her marriage with this other person mm -hmm. um just her front row just her front row. And the front row, again, if you don't know, are those people that when it's all said and done and somebody's reading your obituary and you're having a service, the, the, the building, the church, the, the conventions, whatever it is that the venue might be full of individuals that want to come and pay their respects. But the only people that really matter are those people sitting in the front row, that family, that core unit. And so as long, because when you come to this world, you come in butt naked and by yourself. And the only thing that you're responsible for are those individuals that you bring into this world and the person that you chose to spend that time with. I think that's it. That's just my personal belief. And I'm not going to belabor the point, but I do think that it's one of those things where give it some thought, you know, before you start condemning other relationships and how they're living their life or, you know, how you don't agree with or this, that, any other, make sure you're, you're doing a very strong introspection on how you're living your life. and what you're professing and are you living are you actually living meaning taking the steps that you're pointing you know at others for misstepping mm -hmm. make sure you're doing what you say that you're supposed to do or, or living that life like snakes was talking about well and because we've all had moments where somebody's caught us doing something oh absolutely. i mean you know and then just imagine that you get caught doing something and then now everybody knows about it and that's all you'll ever be remembered for is this one thing forget all the good stuff that you did or whatever so oh agreed so look i hope you guys enjoy the conversation if nothing else we hope that this has actually sparked a little bit of um introspection 
we hope that it sparks, you know, maybe a conversation between you and your spouse, you and your significant other and loved one. Um, have those conversations. It's the difficult, uncomfortable conversations that I think we have a tendency to grow from. Not saying you're going to agree, but you might discover a few things that require more discussion, um, more introspection. And it's when we start peeling back the, the layers of the onion that we start to really get to, you know, the essence of, of who we really are when it comes to these unions. And so that, that's where we're going to leave it for now. Um, I'm looking forward to our, our next episode as well, because stay tuned. It's going to be a really good one. We've got a great interview coming up. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. So like we always say, until the next time. Be blessed. Bye. Bye-bye.